Welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to chat about Ghosts of Shepherdstown. So I wanted to get your opinion first and see what you guys thought and I had a bunch of you guys message me back or tweet at me or even send me Facebook messages. So finally I think I can kind of come up to a conclusion of how I feel about Ghosts of Shepherdstown. So take in mind that Nick Groff, you know, did leave Ghost Adventures. He did leave the Travel Channel. He did sign on with Destination America to do three separate series. So the first series he did was with John Tenney, which was Ghost Stalkers, and that got canceled after the first season. The reason it got canceled was because I guess the editing and post-production got mixed up. The editors didn't do things right. It was supposed to be done in a itemized, synchronized fashion from the first episode shot all the way to, I think it was either the fourth or the sixth episode shot and it got jumbled all around. John Tenney actually got to meet with Blake. Um, there was an event called Strange Escapes, which is what Ghost Hunters from Sci-Fi does, and um, John Tenney was there and Blake got to sit down with him, and that's when John Tenney told him um, about Nick Groff having three shots to do a show with Destination America. So sadly, um, Ghost Stalkers was canceled, it was not re-signed and John Tenney believes it will not be re-signed. Basically it was a post-production fluke and it cost him the show. Nick also was the executive producer on that show and he wasn't on set while they were filming. John Tenney was basically doing it by himself with the other guy and um, it just wasn't done right. Um, it, was, it was a post-production problem. The second show they did was with Katrina, which was Paranormal Lockdown. It has yet to be announced if it has been renewed or not. So far, it's only aired for one season. And then immediately after that one with Katrina aired Ghosts of Shepherdstown. So my first question was, I wanted to find out if Ghosts of Shepherdstown was a real place and if it was actually haunted. So it is true, Ghosts of Shepherdstown is a very haunted location. It is located in West Virginia and it's an extremely haunted area. Um, if you watched the first episode, it actually kind of takes place in a uh, sweet shop, kind of bakery sort of place. The girl in the sweet shop actually does exist. The sweet shop is actually haunted, but I did have an issue with the way it was shot. It just seems very, very staged, and I'm sure you guys can kind of tell, especially for most of you that did write me, um, you kind of had the same vibes I did. So unfortunately, it's it starts out kind of strange. It starts out with um, almost like a Ghostbuster sort of vibe, right? So, um, there's something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Nick Groff and these two other people we don't know. And it's a police officer and he's like, I don't know what's going on, but this place is haunted, so I've had to call in the best of the best. So Nick is like the investigator, the chick is like the psychic, and then the other dude is basically this um, tech guru. So they're driving kind of like in a van, like Scooby-Doo style, and they go into Ghosts of Shepherdstown. They basically open up the scene with they don't know each other, they're kind of trying to get to know each other, none of them have been to this location, and they're kind of negotiating that. Most of that is definitely um, scripted. You can just tell the way, it's, it's not a natural way people would talk, especially of that age range, and um, Nick probably could pull it off better than the other two, but the other two just seem a little bit awkward as they're talking, kind of doing the scripting. Now, once they get to the location, they are doing more script, like voiceover work and stuff like that, even talking into the camera. Um, and then there's a point where this girl introduces herself as a psychic, and unfortunately, I don't really see her um, abilities. I don't really understand what her abilities are other than like sensing energies. But there's a time where they go away and the sweet shop um, worker calls them and says something crazy just happened, I got grabbed or touched or whatever she said. 
And so um, Nick and the guys race back over to the sweet shop to see what's going on. Um, and the girl goes upstairs and she's like, I want to send some things here. And so when Nick, you know, when she comes back downstairs, Nick goes, so did you sense anything up there? And all she says is something like, oh yeah, I could definitely, I could definitely sense something's up there. And it's like, but she didn't go into any more detail, so I don't really understand what her abilities are. I did give it a, a couple of chances, like I, I watched the second week and even the third week. I couldn't get into it, it's just too staged for me. As far as the investigation, the investigation part seems very legit. Just the rest of the show um, is very set up. It's scripted. And what I would give for a real authentic paranormal show. What I would give for one. And I just don't think we're going to see it here yet. I don't know what's going to happen. If Nick actually was signed and contracted to three separate shows, now he has used all of them with Ghost Stalkers and John Tenney, Katrina with Paranormal Lockdown, and now Ghost of Shepherdstown with these two. Um, the problem is, is that when you're doing these television series, it is really important that each person um, has their own personality. And that is what makes like Ghost Hunters between Jason and Grant, even though Grant's no longer with Ghost Hunters, they both have their own personalities. Grant's kind of a little bit more soft-spoken and kind of a, like a negotiator and, and a deep thinker and philosophical thinker. And then Jason's kind of like black and white and this is the way it is and then this is how it is. And then you have Ghost Avengers and Zack's like the aggressive front man and then Nick was kind of like the skeptic of the group and then Aaron's like the scaredy cat. So it's really important that a character is developed immediately when you're doing especially a paranormal television series because it's not only a documentary theme, but it's also a reality series. And the problem that I see failing immediately with Ghosts of Shepherdstown is Nick isn't um, presenting himself as well as he should be as the lead, um, probably because he's just not used to being the lead. And the other two that they had on Ghosts of Shepherdstown didn't really have pizzazz of um, independent personalities. Uh, you know, like I said about Paranormal Lockdown, I really wanted to see Katrina um, shine bright. Not necessarily over Nick, but at least be his equal. And I felt like the way that they filmed it, it was more on the majority of male-dominated slash for Nick Groff. And with Ghost of Shepherdstown, I honestly, I can't even remember the other two... You know, I've watched three episodes now, and the only one I know is, is Nick. I don't know the other two. I don't even remember their names. All I know is that he's the tech guru, and she does the psychic work. Neither of them had a really good, distinctive personality, and not everyone needs a big personality to be remembered, but there needs to be some sort of quirkiness about them. Because if you really think about even Ghost Adventures with Aaron, Aaron isn't the most in-depth as far as like investigating. He's good at what he does. But what he's really known for is saying, oh my god, did you hear that? Dude, what was that? You know, like that is what Aaron is. And, and these two just didn't have anything distinctive. So I'm not saying it needs to be a big giant personality and aggressive like Zach Bagans or even, you know, really quiet and philosophical like Grant from Ghost Hunters. But you have to set yourself apart somehow. And unfortunately, I just did not see that with the characters in this. Even in Nick, I didn't see it. I'm really sad for Nick because I really thought that for whatever reason, him leaving Ghost Adventures, which obviously the paranormal community assumes it had something to do with the Demon House and Zack, we were really hoping that he would break off and do executive production work in Paranormal and it was going to be something just amazing and inspiring and none of us have really seen that side from Nick which has been really sad. We really had higher expectations and of course I love Nick, I'm a Nick Groff fan but I am not seeing um, the productive production level that I would have assumed to see from Nick. So it does make you step back and ask you know, you have Nick, Aaron, and Zach that were basically the three founders of Ghost Adventures. If you look into their background, according to Nick Groff's book and Zach's books and even following them on social media, Aaron and Nick actually knew each other because they were at school here in Las Vegas at UNLV. Zach went to a little like certificate school in Michigan for film. I don't it wasn't even like a bachelor's or an associate's degree. It was just some sort of like a documented um, you know, certificate in documentary film. And then Zach moved to Las Vegas from Michigan and started becoming like a wedding DJ or something and that's how he ended up meeting Nick. 
And then you would have assumed that because Nick and Aaron were in the actual film school, that they would have been like the really serious brains slash technical aspect because they went to legitimate film school and got a bachelor's degree. However, it appears that Zach may be pulling the reins at this point, um, having the creative you know flow because as far as all of the shows Zach has done, so other than you know Paranormal Challenge was only one season and that's just because he couldn't get on set for every single show. He was really tired from filming Ghost Adventures and traveling um, and he didn't want to travel and do a second show so that's why um, Paranormal Challenge did not air for a second season. Then you have Paranormal Paparazzi which was with Aaron Sagers. That failed because Zach refused to go on set and as being an executive producer you really need to be on set so you're making sure everything gets filmed properly and correctly uh, between b-roll and even working with producers and that probably failed just because Zach wasn't on set but Zach has done now um, deadly possessions and aftershocks and they have been extremely successful so far so Zach has completed successfully three out of five shows and um, even Catacombs, so um, Catacombs was technically just a one-time documentary, um, but Nick now has shot for three different shows and they've all failed, sadly. Um, they just haven't met the paranormal community's expectations that we all wanted. So, um, what is my verdict for this? I don't know what's gonna happen. Is he going to get re-signed? Probably, I mean, I'm assuming Destination America um, gave him the three-slot chance. Um, like John Tenney said, because they basically wanted to take the best out of the three shows. Which one will they choose? Well, we already know from John Tenney that Ghost Stalkers will probably not be renewed. So that leaves Paranormal Lockdown with Katrina and Ghost of Shepherdstown. If I were to pick one out of the two, it would probably be the show with Katrina, because at least Katrina does have a bigger personality than Ghost of Shepherdstown. Um, I just don't really see the, the personality in these people um, to be a reality television star. Um, they just don't have any pizzazz and I don't really understand uh, the theme behind either of them. Also, if you do remember the intro of Ghost of Shepherdstown, it is a officer calling in um, the best of the best in the paranormal and then they show um, the map with the little thumbtacks inside of the map which is very Ghostbuster-ish. And then they even have the older lady that's like the telephone um, receptionist with curly hair and glasses, which represents the girl from Ghost um, Busters with the red hair and, you know, she's kind of the geeky chick. So they have definitely followed the Ghostbuster vibe as far as Ghost of Shepherdstown goes. I think that I didn't like that because I like to see individualism. I don't really want to see... Um, you know, Ghostbusters was was a great original movies. I don't know how I feel about the new one coming out, but um, I just wish I would have seen Nick get a little bit more creative rather than just kind of follow the, um, you know, what originality went back to, which is Ghostbusters was the very first thing that came out. Please like my video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please leave me good comments below. Um, any ideas that you guys want to see, please write me. Make sure you follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time.